Today I'm going to show you what's inside of a hybrid car's braking system and how it works. The master cylinder is located over here and it's bolted directly up to the firewall and its lines are going to go over to this big chunk of brake booster actuator assembly over here which is going to split it off to the four wheels. In addition we've got a couple of extra lines that go out to the master cylinder reservoir over here as well as this extra valve over here. Here you can see I've got all the brake components from a Toyota Prius laid out here including the brake reservoir, the ABS and brake actuator, the stroke simulator as well as the master cylinder. Now braking in a hybrid car is a bit different because you don't have that vacuum actuated brake booster that has to work with the vacuum from the internal combustion engine. In hybrid mode this is off and it has to work with electronics. In addition hybrid cars tend to use regenerative braking primarily as their braking force with the hydraulic system more as a backup or at slow speeds. Now if you want to find out more about how the hybrid system works in this car check the video linked above. Now let's start by taking a quick look at the brake mass reservoir just a typical reservoir and what's interesting is there's actually three lines here that feed three separate circuits in this braking system. Now if you follow these two lines off of that brake reservoir on the passenger side of the vehicle it goes to the master cylinder over here on the driver's side of the vehicle that connects with your brake pedal underneath the dashboard here. The master cylinder is very similar to any other master cylinder it's just a giant plunger or piston that you would push down and that would pressurize the fluid pushing it out through this port over here and this port over here. And if I pop off these two feed lines here you can see inside. I'm gonna go ahead and open up this master cylinder here. Here you got the primary piston that sits in front of the brake foot pedal over here. You can see the piston here has two rubber o-rings on the outside here. Here's what the return spring looks like for the first piston. Here's the second piston that sits at the back of the cylinder over here. And that's what the return piston looks like. It's actually a little bit smaller than the first piston. But these work together just like a regular master cylinder in order to create fluid flow. Now on the next component in the system is one of these lines here are going to tee off and go to the stroke simulator. Now in a more conventional car, the master cylinder's pressure is what's going to go through the ABS module and directly to the wheels in order to stop the car. However, in a hybrid system, they completely block off all of the hydraulics that go from this master cylinder at the ABS module and that's responsible for creating the hydraulic pressure for each wheel. Well in that case then when you push your foot down on this master cylinder if it's completely blocked off at the ABS module then the brake pedal will be super hard and you wouldn't get any feel for where your foot is down on the brake. That's where the stroke simulator comes in. It basically is going to take some of that hydraulic fluid push it in through here and there's basically a giant spring inside of here that's reacting to the force on your foot over here and it's just compressing that fluid against the spring over here just so your foot has a gain of how much you've actually pressed down on the brake pedal. The rest of the fluid is then going to move on to this port at the back here out to your ABS module for it to take care of the rest of the control. And emergency mode this master cylinder is going to be the one creating that fluid flow. It's just going to flow through your stroke simulator and then the circuits inside of the ABS module are going to fail open to allow that fluid to go directly to your caliper. Now the majority of this time while you're in hybrid mode these parts are kind of redundant. The stroke simulator also has this electronic component on it. Looks like some kind of a relay or a pressure transducer. Now I'm going to open up the stroke simulator to see what's inside. All right, taking a look at this piston here. You can see it's just a standard piston. It's got a groove here with this little rubber seal here against the brake fluid. We have a giant return spring here and that's what gives you the brake feel when you press down on the brake pedal. And then we've got another collar smaller spring inside of there. So that valve has this little rubbery thing in the middle of it. All right then further down inside of there we've got this little piston and then finally down way inside of there there's a tiny little port that goes out to this little plug here that goes to that sensor that we took off. I'm just going to section this coil here so that we can take a look at what's inside. Oh it's just a coil. What did I expect? This is some sort of a pressure sensor. So taking a look at the layout here, you can see we've got our input over here and our output over here. We have fluid that's going to be drawn in through the oil galleys over here and then sent around the sensor over here and these two ports over here. Looking down inside of here, there is a slot which is what's going to pressurize that piston. Now the rest of the fluid is going to be sent back out through the output to the ABS module actuator. Now if that's turned off and there's no pressure allowed going through here, all of the pressure is going to be built up through this cylinder over here and that's what's going to give you that nice 
nice spongy pedal feeling. And here's a look at the piston arrangement. You essentially have a small piston that's going to push this spring and that's going to push against the larger piston over here. Now take a look at the hydraulic circuit for the brake setup on the Toyota Prius here. It starts here at the brake pedal where we have the stroke sensor that's for your electronic force brake distribution during an emergency panic stop. We then have our master cylinder which is just a typical cylinder. You got two circuits over here. One that goes inside of the ABS module over here and the other one that goes to a stroke simulator and then back into the ABS module over here. Now along those two brake circuits here we have two pressure sensors so the computer knows just how much pressure you're applying to the brake pedal. Then coming along here we have these two isolation valves. If your brakes are operating normally they actually close off these valves so no fluid pressure can come down past these valves here. They completely lock you out. That's why you have a stroke simulator. The stroke simulator is there to absorb the fluid that you're pushing down with your foot so that it simulates your brake pedal being pushed down although you're completely locked off mechanically from the rest of the braking system. Now in fail safe mode these valves will fail open which means that you're going to have a circuit complete that goes down to your front left and front right calipers if the electronics tend to fail in your car. And we come to the bread and butter of the system, the brake actuator. Now in this case, this also does the duty of the anti-lock braking system, traction control system, and stability control system. In addition to actually generating pressure to go out to the four brakes, which you can see the brake lines going here, that'll go to the individual wheel caliper. Now here we've got an input that brings fresh fluid from the reservoir. Then we've got another two inputs here, one from the master cylinder and the other one from the stroke simulator. The reason why you need this to build brake pressure in your hybrid car is because when the internal combustion engine is off you can no longer generate enough vacuum to power a traditional brake booster. In addition this module also has a computer attached to it over here that's also going to talk to your hybrid control module to tell it when to turn on and off regenerative braking to charge the battery. Now once you reach a certain speed this is going to turn on and apply your regular mechanical brake like under 10 kilometers per hour because at that point it's just too slow to use regenerative braking. It's going to move all these hoses out of the way so we can have a closer look. Now taking a look around here besides your inputs and outputs for the hydraulic system we've also got your electronic side here which is what's going to talk to this brake ECU. Now the top here we've got the brake accumulator. This is basically a giant tank that's going to hold brake pressure that's built up by this electric motor here. Now this is what's going to build up that brake pressure so your brakes are ready on tap and have pressure ready just in case you see a pig crossing the road and you need to slam on the brakes really hard you're always ready. This is also the thing that makes that buzzing sound when you open your driver's door and that's just the brake system prepping itself here to build brake pressure before you drive. Now I can wind off the accumulator here. Normally this would have lots of pressure in it and you can see here it's just a simple tank. It's pretty heavy though. All right I'm gonna go ahead and take out these Phillips screws here. Here's your electrical connector. All right next up on the motor here we've got this gasket and here you got the electric motor. Boy there's a lot of brake dust in there. So here you can see we've got the case here which is essentially the stator. It's got these magnets on the inside here. Over here we've got the rotor which has got a tiny little bearing on the back here that sits in the casing over here. Now these motors are actually a brushed motor which means they do have that limited lifespan when these brushes wear down. You see these ones have little grooves in them over here. I'm surprised they didn't use like a brushless DC motor or another solution given that this is a critical safety feature of the braking system and you will have to replace this if it does tend to wear down and the motor can't spin anymore. All right next up we're going to be removing these clips here. All right now once you pop that warning cover off there you can see you got just the back of a circuit board inside of here. I tried all the hex bits and sockets that I had but I couldn't find one that will fit in that hole without stripping out. So I'm going to have to use my universal hex removal tool here. Alright I got me these three nice little souvenirs here. Okay here we have the module over here with all its relays separated from all the little solenoids over here and the valves inside here. Now at the top here we have the brake pump which is what's going to generate brake pressure in order to squeeze the calipers with ease. Now all that pressure is going to be built up in the accumulator. We do have a pressure sensor over here monitoring that and it's then going to be sent off to these four individual lines over here. These are your apply valves. So once you open those valves up the pressure is then going to be sent straight out to your calipers for all four wheels. Now because these are all computer controlled the computer can vary how much pressure is applied to the front, the rear, left or right side. In the case of stability 
stability control, traction control, or anti-lock brake. Now the following valves over here are your release valves. That's going to release your brake pressure, like when you take your foot off the brake, or in anti-lock brake mode when you need to pulsate the brakes. And that's just going to vent the caliper back up to the brake fluid reservoir. Now each one of these brake lines here has its own pressure sensor, so this whole thing operates like a closed loop control system. So here we've got the brake module actuator assembly completely taken apart here. We're going to take a look at how it works. So at the back here we have the ABS motor. It's going to draw in fluid from the reservoir through here and pressurize it. Now that pressurized fluid is then going to be sent down to these eight little actuators here. Now these actuators have mechanical valves inside of there that are going to lock and unlock the pathway from that pressurized fluid side to go out to the caliper of the wheel. Now for one wheel there's an apply and a release solenoids. In the middle here we've got the pressure sensors here. There are seven of them and those are going to correlate to these seven holes here that you see on the circuit board. Now when you step on the pedal and pressure is applied and these two valves are going to completely lock off when you start your car and this thing actuates. So essentially now this module is going to be controlling how much pressure goes to the wheels by turning the electric actuator and enabling these relays here. Now inside of these relays here essentially they're just a giant electromagnet and there's not really any ECU inside of here they're just direct linkages from the plug over here that go to the relays themselves. You can see at the back here these two giant ones are just one coil when it energizes it's going to pull the little pin tool inside of here which is going to actuate and lock off that valve and then you cannot have any pressure going through. And these two top relays here are fail open relays which means that for some reason if there's no electrical power or there's a failure in the system they would fail in the open position which would allow pressure from your foot through the master cylinder to go through these valves over here and go directly to stop the vehicle to the front wheels only. Now of course the downside to this system is of course you've got more electronics which makes things a lot more complicated but more so when you have to do basic maintenance items like changing your brake pads or bleeding your brakes you are going to need an electronic scan tool in order to connect to this guy here and actuate all of these relays to allow fluid pressure to go from your master cylinder and bring fresh fluid through to your wheels. Let me see if I can remove this solenoid over here so we can have a closer look. You can see that all you got to do is energize this coil here and you put it over here and the electromagnetism from this coil generated is what's going to suck up that pin tool inside of there and close off the valve. No, you didn't believe me so I have to cut this open to show you there's a coil inside. And then you can see the coil cut in half. Okay, I wonder what's inside of this little valve. Now if you look really closely inside of there, there's a small little circle inscribed in there and there. And that's a little pin tool that's going to move back and forth in order to activate and deactivate that valve. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and take out these hex bolts. Okay, alright, I'll remove this plate here that has all the pressure sensors on it. It's got these little rubber O-rings on here. And that's just to grab the pressure that's going in the line over here. If I pop off this little seal here. There you go. Now taking a look at how this pump works here, it's just an eccentric cam. You've also got these two teeth over here. Now this entire rotation assembly is what's going to create fluid flow. Now if we look at how it sits inside of the ABS module, you'll see inside of there, there is a hole. And then on this side, inside of here, there is a hole. Inside of both of those holes are these little valves. They are spring loaded and they're going to be touching that eccentric cam. So that's what's going to be keeping pressure on it. You can also directly see the hole in the bottom there. It leads straight to the reservoir. So this reservoir gets directly pressurized before it enters the entire system. Now one thing that always amazes me, especially with like engine blocks and lubrication circuits, and even this part here itself, is how do they take just a big chunk of aluminum and turn it into something so useful? How was it actually manufactured? Now if you really look closely, you could see that they've got little holes here where they've drilled to make little oil galleys in here. So for example, if you wanted to make an oil galley running down this way, if you follow the line down here, you'll see that there's a hole here that corresponds to a galley that would have been drilled here and they've pressed in these little steel balls. Now if you look at all the other steel balls they put in here, they've actually done quite a bit of drilling for galleys to run up and down this way. You've got a lot of it on this side over here. Now if you actually look this way here, you'll see that there's the two holes that had the two pressure relief springs in there. How would they have drilled that? Well, if you look at the side here, there's actually a piece of sticker here and that sticker reveals another steel ball over here which is what would have been the galley that they would have drilled in order to get that. And also furthermore you would have drilled into here to get here and then to get fluid to come in from this way you drill down this way so now you're left with a galley that looks like this and this side is just dead ended. 
And that's pretty much how the brakes on your hybrid car work. So the next time you press your brakes on your Toyota Prius or any other hybrid car, think of all these components that have to work in order to help you stop the car in addition to the regenerative braking and the transmission. Now make sure you follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, LinkedIn, and subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one.